Hello and welcome to another video on large language models and today we'll be doing something really exciting. We'll be building a GPT powered Q&A bot to chat with any website and get answers from the website itself. For this demo, I'll be building my Q&A bot to chat with the website of supertype.ai. I have the address in my browser here, so you could just copy that and paste it into your code later. And I'll ask you to look for information on this page directly. So there are some details about what we do, there's some information about what kind of services we provide. And I'm also going to look at this page, the about us page. And of course there's the about supertype section. Then there are uh, you know, maybe our people, team members, and a bit about our values and some information like that. So I'll ask the GPT bot to look for information on this page and the about us page. And then we will ask it questions about the website and it will fetch us information. So I'll ask questions like, you know, who are the team members? Where do they come from? What kind of tasks do they work on? That kind of questions. And if you're following along, just feel free to change things up uh, with your own questions on your own website or a website that you have permissions to scrape data from. And we're using tools that we've seen throughout the series and that's Lama Index and Chroma. Since we want GPT to be able to answer questions by using information it collects from our list of websites, we also want to install a dependency called Trafila Tura, which is a library that helps us extract the text from a website and we use it with Lama Index to scrape the data uh, so that we can build our index. So what you want to do is to add a pip install Trophila Tura and run it. I already have it installed, so it's not going to do anything for me. And the other dependencies is of course Llama Index, but you've seen that before in other videos in the series. Okay, we also use Chroma. Um, we use Chroma to store the embeddings. If you're unsure what an embedding store is or what a vector database is or just embeddings in general, then I recommend a previous video where we do a deep dive into the concept of embeddings for large language model and especially on the role that Chroma plays in this uh, LLM ecosystem. Now it's a 40 minutes long video, but it's really worth it if this whole embeddings idea seems foreign to you or if you're quite new to working with LLM in general. Okay, without further ado, let's open up a new file in your favorite IDE and then let's get into coding our QA bot. So I'm gonna be on demo8.py. All of these files, all of this code data sample, all of this will be on my GitHub. Just go and uh, look for the repo, do a git for git clone. So we have our env files in here. We wanna load in the environment variables that are declared in there, right? So we wanna just do a from.env import load.env and then we just want to call it. So this is going to look into our env file and it's going to find all of the environment variables that we declared in there and let's say you have, let's say you have a txt file, right, you call it .env and you have something like my open AI key, right, and you have some data, right. If you call load.env, then it's just going to read that in and then you can now go ahead and just say print open AI key. Now the reason I'm not going to show you that is because it does contain my actual keys so I won't open that up for you but this is kind of what you have in there and you should already know how to do this right so just open up a env file and de define your api keys in there and we'll be using you can use langchain you can use llama index They're very similar in a lot of respects but I'll be using llama index so I'm going to say from llama index import uh, I'm going to be importing gpt chroma index this is something that we've dived into um we spent like 40 minutes talking about this in the last video, right? We talked about Chroma Index, what is the point of an embeddings database store, uh, talk about all of this stuff, so I'm not going to go into that in a lot more details anymore. But I did want to bring in something new, um, it's called the Trafila Tura Web Reader. This is actually going to be the tool we use to go to the website, collect the data, put them into our index. We also want a place to store all of the embeddings, so let's, uh, let's use Chroma for that, let's say import Chroma DB. Okay, we talked about Chroma as well in the earlier video, so I'm not going to go too much into that, but it's basically an embedding store, it's an embedding database. I want to have a helper function that I'll use to create this embedding, so I'm going to say define, create a new function, and I'm going to say create embedding store, and it will take one parameter, which is the name that we want to give it, then it's just going to initialize that, so Chroma client, Chroma DB dot client. That should then initialize that, and then I just want to return this so I can call it later. So I'm going to say Chroma Client Create Collection. We've seen this before as well, and I'm going to say Name. Then I'll say if I run this script directly, so the way you specify that is to say if name equals to main. That's saying that if I run this directly and not importing this file into some other modules, so I want to say this is a collection that I can use, and that would just be create embedding store. And I don't know, I can quite super type because we're going to scrape that website there. You can hit Control B to hide the sidebar, that navigator view on the site, right? You can hide that away, Control B, toggle that on and off. Now I want to actually do the query, I want to actually say, okay, activate my Trafila Tura web reader to go to that page, collect some data into the index store, and I can do my Q&A on it. So I'm going to have define query page, and it will take a collection because it's going to pass it into the index store. And that's just going to be our embedding store, and it's going to say, okay, once you query the data, pass it into the index, or build that index from this collection. Okay, then I want to have URLs. So how do I call Trafila Tura Web Reader? I just have to say docs equals to Trafila Tura Web Reader and 
I could call it and then use the load data. Um, it's gonna need a URL. It's gonna need a set of URLs to load from. So I'm gonna set URLs here. And then finally, I'm gonna say index. Now build an index. So that's just gonna be the GPT Chroma index. And it's gonna use the from documents and gonna pass in the documents that we create here. So this is where it's gonna collect all the data, right? It's gonna load all the data and it's gonna use those data and build a index. But where is it gonna start? It's gonna be in the Chroma collection, which is right up here. So let's go ahead and say Chroma collection equals to collection. You could return the index at this point if you want. To call a query page, we already have collection, but we do not have the URL. So you wanna pass in the URLs as well. So I'm gonna say URL list. In fact, I'm gonna bring this up and then I'm gonna give it a list of uh, different sites. So I'm gonna say the homepage, supertype.ai, that's the first one. And the second one, that's gonna be the about us page. All right, so there's a list of two. You can pass in as many as you want. I'm gonna just pass two. If you want a modified example, go to GitHub, fork this, or if you're following along, just pause and then just swap this in and put in your own website or any website that you have permission to scrape data from. And also we have the URL list, we have the collection, and we are free to call the query page now because we have both of them. So all we need to do is to say query page and we pass in the collection and we pass in the URL list. All right, I feel like this is good. Let's fix that typo. You could actually have a third function to sort of do the Q&A, or you could just build it right into the query page itself. So in that case, if you want to do it separately, you just have one like ask questions, for example, um, ask question. But if you don't want to, you could just pass the questions into this one and do your questions in here. So in this case, you wouldn't be returning the index. Um, but instead, you're going to iterate to that, right? You're going to iterate through each of the questions that are passing. So I'm going to say for question or for Q in questions. Um, let's print the question and then let's print the answer. So print the question. I like to add an extra line after that, so a new line to break that out. And then I want to print my answer. So I'm going to say answer. And this is the answer, but how do I get the answer? Well, that's going to be what GPT returned to me. So I'm going to say this is the index. You do a query, get the result, and return it back to me. So I'm going to say index.query and pass in my question. And now we have a query embedding store. We have this question, questions. So now we need to also, to call this, now we need a third parameter, which is the question parameter. So let's pass in questions. We don't have questions yet, so let's create it. So questions, let's pass in some questions there. Now if you were to look at, if you were to manually open up a web browser, go to the website supertype.ai or supertype.ai slash about us, you could read up about it and then think about what kind of sensible questions you may be asking. But I already have a list of questions I have in the back of my mind. So I'm gonna say like, for example, the first one is, who are the members of supertype.ai? Right, who's the team behind that? So that's the first question. Um, maybe the second question, what problems are they trying to solve? Okay, so that's the second question. Let's add a third question and we're done. So what are the important values at the company? And so we have all three questions. We have the query pages, we're good. Let's save all of this, Let's go into our terminal, clean out the screen, and then you could just do Python demo it dot py and let's see the results it's using CUDA using the pre-trained sentence transformer it's building up the index now we have the question set answers and that's amazing all right so let's take a look at the first question who are the team members of supertype.ai and what our bot is going to do is to go to the website it's going to look at the different text on it and then it's going to generate an answer. It says the members of supertype.ai are Samuel, that's me, Nick, Nayoko, um, Kelmi, and Aurelia, Joro, um, and so on and so forth. So that's pretty good. This is very accurate. It, I didn't have to train anything. It's just basically there's no pre-training. There's no, there's no fine-tuning or anything like that. It's just out of the box. It goes to the website, collects the information, and then GPT is going to just try to infer from that. So the second question is what problems are they trying to solve? So here, it says supertype is trying to solve the problem of introducing productivity gains and efficiencies in business processes using AI and machine learning. I mean, they write even better copy than our website, uh, honestly. They're providing data analytics and data engineering services that integrate with the rest of the business processes, custom development for data engineering, analytics, and data science projects of any size, and manage development for data engineering, analytics, and data science projects of any size. Okay, so this is a bit of a rep. You, you can see that usually when you see that uh, an answer is generated by LLM or a sentence is generated by LLM, there is some sort of pattern to it. And one of the pattern is that it likes to repeat itself. Additionally, they're providing data science consulting, data science advisors and developers, fully managed analytics consulting, data analytics and consulting services. So this is not bad at all, especially the first two sentences. I really like it. It's trying to solve the problem of introducing, because I don't think this, 
this copy is anywhere on our website. This is not on our website. It's not trying to collect the information and then give you access. So this is actually generating new ways of explaining the kind of things that our company is doing. And I don't think this is a copy, uh, copy and paste thing you know, from our website. So Superta is trying to solve the problem of introducing pr productivity gains and efficiencies with processes using AI. So this is completely new. So that's nice. Okay, what are the important values at a company? The important values at a company are taking ownership, taking the lead, taking the long-term view, bringing trust, bringing mastery, and bringing integrity. And that's also pretty accurate. Uh, if you look at our website, we actually have a section that talks about that. But again, I didn't fine-tune it. I didn't try to cheat around by giving it some hints. Basically, just asking what are the important values, and you have to go and scan through these two pages and find which section would answer the question and then generate the answer for it. So it's pretty nice, pretty neat. And that's about it for a very quick, very short, just practical hands-on tutorial on how do you build a GPT-3 powered Q&A bot um, that allow you to query and answer, ask questions directly uh, with any website. So go and put that in practice. And if you did build something cool, leave it in the comment section, share it with the rest of the world. So I'll see you uh, in the next video. Have a nice day.